good morning friends welcome to the CEC Edusat live lecture dear friends in this session today we would be talking on marketing and customer and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios uh, Ms. Pallavi Mohan Ms. Pallavi Mohan has immense experience dear friends we would like to tell you all that her industrial experience uh, would definitely help us out she has worked in India and abroad she has worked with the, the reputed companies of the world as well as of India and uh, we would like to welcome our guest Ms. Pallavi Mohan and let's try to grab maximum knowledge through her. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Dissit Lecture. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Hi students, uh, I'm Pallavi Mohan as Gitika said and thank you Gitika for introducing myself. We'll be talking today about marketing and customer. Now these two things are really important and would never die. Uh, a marketplace, now what is marketing? Uh, the question arises when we talk about marketing and customer. What is marketing? So if I ask you, what do you understand from marketing? Some might say malls, we go and do marketing there. Uh, we do some shopping there. Uh, a lot of shopping uh, related to marketing. Uh, then you will say that some may say that malls are not there in our places. We have markets. Yes, marketing is done there as well. And now, these days, uh, marketing is not just a brick model, but also a click model. So you would find marketing tactics and techniques and your shopping arena online as well. So wherever you say these days, marketing is the must for every company, whether it is a government organization, whether it is a MNC. I have been working with a lot of MNCs and contributing in a lot of countries. Uh, so every place it's different kind of marketing. Uh, there are different types of customers and thus there's a relation between the two. Now just imagine when you enter a mall, uh, whether it is any of the states or any of the countries you have visited, just imagine yourself that you have entered a mall right now. What do you see? You see a lot of shops. Now the shops could be exactly buying a product or maybe it could be of a service. Uh, a product could be maybe a mobile phone, uh, it could be maybe something to drink. Uh, so it's like you pick up a product. Uh, it could be a service as well. You go for a massage or maybe you go for a haircut. Uh, so that's a service. So in some cases, it's just the product. In some cases, it's just the service. And in some cases, it's a mix of two. But it has to be done very strategically. So whenever you're entering a mall, even the placement of stores is done very emphatically, is done very thoughtfully. Uh, for example, if we say uh, there's a kiddie land or there's a kid store uh, which is there and next to it is a kid arena wherein there are a lot of swings, uh, kids can play around. Uh, so this is a complete zone where it's meant for the kids. So now it would be you know, uh, nice to think that there should be stores which should be related to it. Now, for example, if you say kid, what is the first thing which comes into your mind? The first thing would be uh, kids' toys. Yes, that's a, a, an answer. Second, kids' wearables. What do they wear? Uh, for girls, it would be different. For boys, it would be different. Then it could be something else. If there's a small kid as well, so maybe a stroller is there. Uh, maybe they have a couple of kids' parents. So the shops which will be there would be in and around. Also, strategically placed, uh, kids are very attracted towards chocolates, towards ice creams, uh, towards donuts. So similar shops, different, different brands, uh, not naming the brands right now here, uh, but when it comes to your mind, say chocolate, what does it come to your mind? When it comes donuts, what does it come to your mind? So the store which is the nearest to that play area, that becomes a place okay a person would go and buy in so this is a marketing strategy so whenever a thing is done whether you enter into any market it is done very strategically so kids are there the kids shops are around now you move on when you move to a food court for example you are entering a food court now things would be devised in a proper way it could be stores which take cash uh, it could be stores which take card of the mall itself Mall wants to know which particular shop is doing good, which is not doing good, how much cash is getting collected. And in some cases, uh, the rentals are not taken from the uh, owners. So what is done is a percentage share. So for example, if a store is doing say 10 lakhs 
and 10% of it is the rental for the mall. So in that case, how would they come to know? So they make a card. So I'm sure when you are entering into a mall, you would have definitely gone to the food court, yummy, yummy. And uh, definitely you would have seen that they give you a card. Now, what does the card do is, firstly, the cash transaction or the credit card transactions takes place at one location. That is one. Second, the mall comes to know how many stores are doing good. Uh, for example, if the rentals are, uh, say, 4 lakh per store for a month, uh, how much are they making? Are they making good amount? If they are not month after month, maybe they would help in contributing in saying that, okay, they would put board near the reception, uh, they will do more marketing about it so that people come to know because or else if they are not doing good, they would eventually leave. So it is a combination because even the customers, what are they willing to eat? Uh, you know, slicing and dicing the data gives you a lot of knowledge. Uh, so this is a scenario of marketing tactics and techniques, which I was, I took you through a frame where you have already been through, maybe a mall. For example, uh, some of you say, no, I haven't visited a mall at all. Maybe, yes. Uh, in a lot of metros, the malls are there. Uh, in non-metros, maybe, maybe not. So let's talk about the market. Market never dies. Uh, and marketing also related to it. So now if you enter into a market, uh, you will see that every person who's selling, for example, a vegetable vendor, they would keep their vegetables in a very strategic order. They would not keep same color vegetables together. They will keep different, different, so that it looks colorful, fresh. Uh, sometimes you'll see that they put water on it to make it look good. Why? Because some of them come from directly from the soil uh, uh, and they are dirty at that time. So they put water to clean it up so that it looks shiny, nice and shiny. You would take it then. If it's dirty, people go a little away. So how do they arrange it? Uh, even a fruit seller does a little bit marketing tactics. Uh, there's a place where you can, you know, uh, you know, buy your, you give the vegetables to the vendor and say, okay, this is what I want to buy. And then he has a measuring place and then he measures, take the cash. Uh, in this, in these cases, Paytm because of the demonetization, uh, definitely. So vendors are also trying to do the best possible they can. Uh, so that is a market. So when you enter, I gave you just a vegetable, which vegetable vendor, which is a very common, easy uh, thing to you know recollect. Others could be, what do you say when you go to a market? What do you see? Maybe you see a saloon. So now, one we have talked about the product, which is a vegetable. The other is a service. Uh, so you go inside, get your hair cut done or any other services. So now when you go inside, maybe there's a waiting line. For the waiting line, they keep chairs. So everything is strategically thought so that it is beneficial to the customer. Whenever there's a market and people are there to make money from you, the customers, which is who? Which is you. So customers and marketing both are important, has to be done strategically. Now, let's think about those customers uh, which do not have the time either to go to the market or to go to the mall. Now what? Uh, products are needed, services are required, uh, you can't do without it. Uh, maybe you want to you know, look for a house, you don't want to get risky, so you go with the organized sector, so you contact whom? So it's like you will go for the branded stuff. Why? Because you know that if you're going through this uh, and you're putting huge amount of money, then it won't go bad. So another one, if you want to buy a product, what would you do? You can't reach out to the mall. You can't reach out to the market. Well, for that, the answer is people go online. Now, these days, because of online today itself in the economic times, uh, it's like uh, there was an article wherein one of, I will not name it, but you can read it. It is today's uh, newspaper itself. Uh, a particular brand which sells through online channel had done 300% and uh, it was competing with a huge store which is there for more than 10-15 years in India. So when you were calculating that, people were like, okay, this store was there way back 15 years in market and is doing X while a newcomer who has been in India for say just a couple of years is doing 300 times of what that particular known, well-known store is doing. So all this is really related because people want convenience. For example, if you see me, I go to office. Uh, once I go to office, I return back only after 6, 6.37. 
after 7 o'clock, sometimes it gets so tiring. You do not want to go to the market. You do not want to take pains to find a parking location, park your car, get down, buy stuff. Uh, it becomes really, really tiring. Again, to the malls, huge rush. And these days, of course, for the Christmas and New Year, people are buying a lot of gifts. So again, it's like, you know, every time there is something or the other, there are a lot of occasions in India. There are a lot of celebrations in India. So every time uh, what I feel is I don't want to go to the market or mall, there are certain things which I can buy online. So I go on online sites which are specific. You order there. It comes right to your doorstep. And they give you a lot of options. You can, if you want to pay, you can pay with a credit card. You just put in your credit card, swipe, and that's it. That's all about it. And if you want, you could pay by cash. If you have cash in hand and you can say cash on delivery because I want to just check out the product and then only I want to pay. Or maybe my credit card limit is not there or maybe I don't have a credit card. So for what? what customer can do you know it's a beneficial situation for the online portal as well as for the customer so this these are the three things which I discussed with you now whenever you think about marketing the three things which I say is where you go you know malls markets online shopping so this is your shopping category now we were talking about marketing this is just in general just to give you a glimpse so that you get into the process of understanding the next is a customer what is a customer? Customer is who? It's you. It's me. Your friends. It could be your family members. So when you think about these, a customer, for example, me, what do, you, what do I want to buy? Uh, for example, you, what did you buy today? Or maybe what did you buy yesterday? Uh, think about it. What did you buy in a month? You know, you my, might be some people have a writing diary and they write as to what they have bought. So it's you, the customer. So if you think about when, when you as a customer, where did you enter? What did you do? What did you observe? Certain times you feel, oh, I went to a coffee chain. I went to a coffee place where you can have coffee. There I saw a tent card. Now that is marketing. It is not belonging to that particular coffee industry. It is belonging to some other industry. Maybe a mobile company wants to advertise. Of course, they want to advertise. Why? When you're sipping a cup of coffee, you won't just gulp it in. You're sitting there, relaxing. It's a hot coffee. So wh what do you expect? So maybe a mobile company wants to say, hey, here is a mobile. Check it out. When you're sitting, relax. They want to market and target you. The customer who can pay at a coffee shop, say 100 bucks for a coffee and not making at home for two bucks, that means that customer has money. And if you have money, and if you can afford it, why not take the convenience? You know, we should market it to them. So this is a way to go about. Uh, now, this is example which I'm saying, why don't you relate it to yourself? Now, if I say, what did I buy recently? Well, I bought vegetables. I bought some rice. I bought some dal. And all this I had done online. You go on the online channel. Maybe it is directly the brand company which is now offering or it could be through another portal and that place has a lot of products. So I have done a couple of purchases and I get the delivery right at my doorstep. And if I'm not there, they come again. So it's not that if you're not there at home, you miss out the product and the product would never ever reach you. No way, it is not like that. It would come to you, they would take time, they will give you a call. If you're nearby, they would wait for you. In some cases, if you're not nearby, they will fix a time and come back again. So you do not miss your article. Now let's think about your friends. When your friends do some purchases, what do they do? When they go to a pizza place along with you, you all together are going to a pizza place. We will not name any brands here again, but just imagine what are they buying? Uh, it could be firstly divided into two channels. I'm vegetarian, I'm non-vegetarian. So the vegetarian guys sit together and the non-vegetarian guys sit together because they don't want to mix it up. Now the next is what kind of a pizza do you want? Okay, what are the things available? Out of that, okay, if there is a combo deal that if you buy X, you get two vegetarians, two non-vegetarians, and you get, you know, something to drink along with it. So it's a combo offer which is cheaper, you know. If you buy in bulk, obviously things come out to be cheap. So how do your friends take tackle that? How do they say, how do they go about? Now, when they are doing the thinking, you have to also see how the market is thinking about it. They have made these combos so that it suits exactly what you need. Maybe to do a little cross-sell or upsell. So this is all a thoughtful process. So this is a customer. This is you. 
this is your friends. So this is what I got you into the thought process of what others are thinking. Every finger is not equal. Every friend would have different taste, would have different, maybe somebody is allergic to something. So maybe somebody is allergic to mushroom. So they will say, okay, I do not want mushroom in my pizza. You know, if a person is vegetarian, still that particular category is removed. So everything is done very thoughtful. So this is, I'm, as a customer, you, you're thinking about your friends. Now you thought about yourself. I told you about me. We are talking about friends. Now think about your family. In your family, let's talk about the parents. They are of a slightly different generation. So they would have a different mindset. For example, for me to convince my mother to take a Uber, it was really, really a time task, you know, exercise for me. Firstly, I downloaded the Uber app because she could not do it herself. Then I said, you just need to click a button. The chauffeur would be there, right there, and would drop you at the location. So you don't need car at time. You don't need to drive. Uh, you know, she was like, no, no. I will drive my own car and I don't want, want to depend on these. So I said, fine, that's okay. Now, if you talk to a younger generation, they will say, although I have money, my salary run in lakhs. However, I do not want the car. Why? Why should I take the pain of, you know, getting a car, uh, taking care of it, taking it to the service center? Finally, it is getting, you know, uh, it would start with, say, 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs. The drop-down value would be 8, 7, 6, 5, 2. Why should I keep such things? And why should I maintain it? So these days, uh, owning kind of a product is not there with a couple of people, with a lot of uh, new generation. They say sharing. We will share. Uh, you know, it would be a cab driver who comes, picks you from a location, drops you another. Within that service also, it was a thought process saying, why not do a pool? The pool would save two things. One, it would create less of pollution because there will be less cars, because there's so much of, you know, uh, cars in Delhi, in other places, metros, that you need to reduce it somehow or the other how. And it would save the cost for the customer. If you're going from a location A to B or A to C, there is a place which comes right in the center, which is B. So if there are two people starting from one location, one can go to B and the other can go to C. So why not share it? It will, you know, save you money, save you some bucks. So the concept is changing. Now, this is the way your family members think. Now, for example, when I buy vegetables or I buy um, rice, uh, which I just mentioned, I would go and buy it online. Why? Because I would buy at least 5, 10 kgs. So I don't want to pick up and then get all that stuff to home. I want somebody to deliver it right to my doorstep. I don't want to go to a shop, buy it, or mall, buy it, get it to my car, from the car, get it to the parking, from the parking, get it to my house. Why should I do so much of efforts? Lot of efforts, lot of time consumption. So you save on both, I get go, it, go and get it online. That is an easier bet. But your family would say, I want to check out the rice. I want to check out the quality. Maybe instead of basmati, I want something else. I want a brown rice or some other. I want to check it out and buy it out. Uh, if I'm looking at a particular gift item, I really want to touch, feel. The tangible thing comes into place. Uh, if I'm buying a shoe, I really want to check it out. Uh, so they would have a different strategy altogether. They would have a different thinking, a different process of what they are doing. So their habits, generally habits don't change. So it's like they want to follow the same. So to get them to a mode where you say, well, you can get brown rice and you can see how it is on the net. It is so detailed out that you cannot even see it from there. So it's like, you know, it is just absolutely same. It's just you cannot smell it and see, okay, whether it's fresh or not, but older the rice, better it is. So it's like, uh, fine. So you have to think how your parents are thinking, how your family members are thinking. Maybe the vegetables they buy, they want it soft or hard. So they want to go to the marketplace, the vendor, check it out and then buy it. For us, we just go online, click and it comes to us. So it is somebody else choosing, but generally when they send it to you, they see what kind of things you want. So it's like the way your family members buy, the way your dad behaves. Maybe he wants to pay the electricity bill. Now, electricity bill is just a click away, not even a click. It's I've put my credit card on the particular uh, app and that's it. It goes automatically every month. I have said, fine, if the bill is more than 4,000, only then notify me or else do not notify me. Just take it out from the bank and give it away. So, but people in your family, maybe your dad, 
maybe your grandpa, whoever is elder will say, no, I want to go to the location and stand in the line, give my time away, check the bill and then pay. Well, the bill is already there online available. It doesn't even come these days. If you want, it will not come to your house. It will come directly on your mobile device. So why do you want to go there? No, I had been doing this and I want to continue. Unless and until they forget one day and you say, oh, today was the last date. Well, here it is. Here's the number. Here's it and it's paid. Then they realize that, yeah, I was wasting time. I, you know, I used to chit chat, go there, waste my time. However, I can do something better and I can pay the bills online, which is quick which is easy. So you have to think how your family members are thinking about it. Uh, you know, so everybody in your family, a kid would behave differently. Maybe you would say, I want to eat healthy stuff. The kid would say, what health, what wealth? I want my chocolates. That is what is healthy for me. So every customer is different and a different thought process. Now, if you imagine going to a mall, uh, or maybe a store where chocolates are available, uh, toys are available. Now, when these things are available, they would not keep it at a higher aisle. They will keep it at the aisle, same aisle, but at a lower place. Why? It would be as per the height of the kid, so that the kid can reach out. If it is placed right up above, say, five feet, then it is out of sight, out of mind. So, the kid would not see it. So, again, the strategy is used. Again, the positioning is used one product, where would you keep it? So that it's a buy, it's a eye level, it's a buy level. So when the kid's eyes level is say two, three feet, then the product needs to be there right at their eye level. If I need to buy a product and they are trying to target something towards me, maybe honey during winters, you want to buy honey. So the honey which will be kept would be kept at five. Why? Five feet? because that is my eye level. That is most of the eye levels in India. So it's like definitely eye level is the buy level. So every time anything which is done in marketing is a very, very, very thoughtful process. Uh, whether it's your customer, who's the customer, whether it is market, where is, which location, what place, what kind of a promotion tactic will you use. So everything is very thoughtful. So this is about customer. So when we're talking about marketing and customer, these are the two things you should just have it back of your mind. Now, I would, uh, when I had joined, um, you know, my first job and uh, I was pretty scared. It was, I was just 18 and uh, I really didn't know how to behave, how to talk to customers. Uh, the customer could be, you know, although the customer was you, me, our friends and family. However, you are very scared when you go to the first day on our first day. So, uh, I took a sales job, I got a sales job and I was hired um, in an apparel store. Now uh, a customer walked in and the Sage who was sitting right besides at the corner having a cup of tea looking at me that what will she do on her first day, uh, you know I was very serious, I said fine, uh, the customer has walked in, I greeted the customer, good morning sir, uh, said fine, good morning, he said look I'm looking for a white shirt and uh, really it's my interview so I want to look nice and good. I don't want to wear this old shirt which is like you know uh, there's a haldi color or something there and I do not want to do that. So I want a quick change. Uh, so give me the white shirt quickly. So he pick up a shirt which was a simple white shirt not costing much. It was costing say 300, 400 bucks and I said fine and I quickly packed it. It was my first sale so I was really really excited. I was like, yes, I have done it. I have achieved it. That's my first sale and now I'm relaxed. So I went, quickly packed it, took the money, put it, gave it to the cashier. The cashier, the transaction happened. And the first customer who walked in, the transaction took place. He was happy. He left. Um, and I came running as a kid. You don't know what to do. You came running to the sage and you said, uh, the first transaction is done. Uh, so the Sage G he had another sip of coffee, water, whatever he was having and he said, uh, what did the guy ask you? So I said, he asked for a white shirt. He said, what did you sell? So I said, I sell a white shirt. So he said, no, no, that he already came in for. There's a store, their shirt's already there. And if he came in and asked for a white shirt, anybody could have given it and it would have been a purchase. He was going for an interview. There are interviews which are lined up uh, on the right hand side. This corporate MNC keeps on hiring people. What did you do? 
I said, I sold the shirt. He said, no, you did not sell the shirt. He had already come. He would have purchased it any which ways. He was, you know, in a hurry. He wanted the shirt. He wanted to go for an interview. He would have purchased it. So it was a definite sale. What did you do? So I said, uh, yeah, so I didn't say anything much. Uh, I was such a happy face and it became very sad. Uh, but I said, yes, yes, yes. And then he, he got a phone call or something, but he turned um, and the transaction, the, you know, conversation just remained there. Then there was another guy who came in. I was trying to see what did I do wrong or what did I do right. So then the transaction, I'll tell you what happened after a quick break. So coming back now, uh, it's basically, so that transaction happened where the shirt, the person came, the, bought the shirt and left. I spoke to the Seji, he said, you didn't do the sale, the sale already happened, just like that. Uh, I said, but I greeted, I welcomed him and he would have said, he would have come any which way. So the conversation ended there. Then there was a next person who came in. So this guy, he walks in. Uh, now, by the time I had thought few things in my mind, so I went to him. I said, uh, hello, sir, how are you doing today? and uh, how can I help you? So now, firstly, a line or two got added because now it was a second guy, although it was the first day. Uh, however, uh, he went and he came inside. He said, uh, look, I'm looking for, he was very confused. Uh, so he was like, uh, I want to look good in the interview and I just want to get selected. It's like, I cannot afford to not have this job. I really want it. I said, uh, well, now things had gone into my mind. I said, if you really want to get selected, the first thing is the first impression. Now, when we say about the first impression, you should look really good. So what I suggest is get a good shirt. He said, yeah, that, that's what I came for. I said, well, and uh, you should look different because everybody would have a new shirt. Everybody would be, you know, bright and shiny kind of a thing. So why don't you get a tie which will look something different? Nobody would be wearing tie because they would have not thought it and a matching cuffing to go with it. So, you know, it would you know, when a person looks all the white shirts together, you would be something which would be different and you would be way ahead of others and, uh, you know, you will be treated differently. So I uh, said, yeah, that's a good idea. It would make a difference right on the first sight. So please help me out. So he picked out that two, three hundred rupees shirt. I said, oh, no, no, don't, don't, uh, for you, uh, let's leave this. Why don't you try uh, this variety, which is, yeah, a little higher on the budget, but for an interview, you should have such shirts. On a regular basis, you can have two, three hundred shirts. This is, I'm talking way back 10, 15 years, you know, 18 years actually. So that's the reason the prices were two, three hundred. Now you would not get a shirt of two, three hundred. So he said, I said, two, three hundred is not for you. Why don't you go for something like five hundred or seven hundred or, you know, a little more. So he said, no, 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 I have a budget. So not a problem. Let's go for five hundred. So now he he came towards the two hundred segment, two hundred, three hundred. I took him to the double segment, although it looked good as well. So it was a win-win situation because everybody was wearing the same category. Now you're getting him apart, looking a little richer. Uh, you know, in the shirt itself, in the way he was dressing up, I matched it for him. I said, uh, blue is like kind of royal. 
uh, it shows you know that you are into the job. So why didn't you take something which is a blue color tie which will match it to your shirt, white can match it at all, uh, you know absolutely and why not take the cufflinks which are exactly similar, maybe blue in color. So he said yes, he went inside, he wore, he felt very good, he said wow that's how I you know uh, if somebody, if I was interviewing somebody I would have selected a person like this. So thank you so much, I really appreciate your efforts and really thoughtful process and now I, what I had done in the process. Firstly, I had done upsell. What is an upsell? Upsell is if a customer comes to you and says I want a product worth 200 rupees and you sell him a product which is above 200. That is called a upsell. What is a cross sell? Which again I did in this process. I sold him cufflinks and a tie. Now with the shirt what goes along? It's a you know what goes along with it. So a tie and a cuffling is a cross sell, you know. So this is an example which I wanted to share that these are marketing tactics which keep on happening. If you go to a burger place, they say, can we make it a combo by just adding 10 bucks? You say, wow, yes. So that is upsell. Can we just add in this? If you're having burger, why didn't you have Pepsi to along with it? So it's a cross sell altogether. So all this is upsell, cross sell. These are tactics of marketing. Why? To increase the sales for the marketing it's beneficial for the customer you know burger and some you know drink along with it would taste well and you are eating something so you should have some water intake maybe that is a thought process so it will go well so this is a way a cross sell and upsell happen and I was really happy the entire bill went up way above of whatever that person had come in for so now the Seji automatically got up once the person left and he came towards me. He showed a thumbs up. He says, now you know what to do. So the lesson is, this case study which I am discussing with you is, why? A person who enters a shop is a customer, you and me. You have to help them out to understand what would be beneficial. Now, if I had kept on going a pant, a jacket, a this, a that, it would have been way too much. So I should see how much should I stop at. So this you come to know while interacting with a lot of customers. Same with customers, they would understand how a shopper is trying to trick them if they have done a lot of shopping and they have a thoughtful process. So this is just an example. Uh, what are you see on your screen is an upsell and a cross sell. So another example could be when you're buying a vehicle. When you're buying a vehicle, say, uh, you know, a brand X, they have a lot of varieties. One costs 7 lakhs, one costs 8 lakhs. There are some additions to it. So you should always, one should always try to sell it uh, up above. Now, when you're selling a, a car which is say higher in cost, definitely there will be some added advantage. That's the reason why it is at a higher price. So again, it's a win-win situation for the customer as well as the buyer. Another example, this, this is the example of upsell. A cross-sell example would be when you're buying a laptop or you're buying a desktop, you buy a mouse along with it, you buy a colorful pad along with it. So now this is a cross-sell how the person her salesperson is able to convince you that why don't you take a you know it comes with a mouse but it is that is attached why don't you take a one which is wireless that is you can keep it anywhere while you're working on the sofa it becomes so comfortable or why don't you take attractive mat which is really nice uh, to look at or maybe it reminds you about something so again so now that is a cross sell so you're selling related product so these are marketing tactics uh, technique. So when we are talking about marketing and customer, these things are really crucial, important both for the marketer as well as for the customer. It's a thought process. Now coming to the bookie language, which <laughs> book language actually, which you will get it in all the books online, uh, the definitions uh, about the categories and stuff like that. So what is marketing? the action or business of promoting selling products or services uh, so including market research and advertising so this would be the exact definition of marketing however we have already gone through what is marketing so action or a business of promoting yes in everything which we had discussed so far all these points were there yes there would definitely be a selling either a product or a service research is done a thoughtful research to see how things are placed. The example which I took when I said that yes, when there is a place where kids can play, the stores nearby would be chocolate place, ice cream place, 
kids store, toy store, things like that. So that is a market research which is done when making a mall, it is a thoughtful process. Advertising, yes, if you have a very good product, a very good service, but you do not advertise about it, nobody would come to know. Customers would not come to know, you, me, friends, family would not come to know about it. So advertising is crucial. Now what uh, marketing has done, what people have done, they have put it into four perspectives. Uh, what is marketing? It is defined by four P's, simple four P's which we have been discussing throughout, but it is put in a process. So it is product, price, place, promotion. We will be discussing all these very, very important things because whenever I have spoken to you about the entire case study, about various examples of mall, market, customers, uh, these four things would always stay. There has to be a product, price has to be there, product, price, place, a place where you are buying it, whether it is market, mall, online, so product, price, place and promotion. So how would you promote it to the customer? So we will be discussing this in a thoughtful process. Now let's go with the first one, product. Now the product could be a small little product, maybe a jewelry, maybe a little phone, you know. So this could be a small product. Now what do you think about a big product? A big product could be maybe a car, uh, maybe the mattress which you sleep on, the bed which you sleep on, it's a huge bed. So that's a big product. Now when that, now I've discussed about two products, what about the logistics of it? When you're talking about mobile phones, yes, it is electronic item. It should not keep on falling down. Uh, it should have a protective layer up. It should have a protective layer below. It should come in a box which is compact uh, and has, you know, if it falls down, it should not destroy the phone altogether. So the box would be compact as well. So when you have bought, I'm sure most of you would have a mobile and you would have bought it. So you know how it comes. It comes in a box. Now, it's a size which you can hold it in your hand. Now, think about a bed which you sleep on. Now, do you go and purchase it like this? Okay, give me the bed. No. How the logistics of the bed takes place? Once it is made, it's made in the factory. It comes to your house. How does it come? Does it come in a car or an auto? Or uh, do you get it in your hand? No. It comes in a truck, a vehicle which can carry and take that much load. So every product, you have to be very thoughtful of each and everything. So a product, so if you say the example which we are taking, both products may be of the same cost. You know, these days mobiles, they cost around about 50,000 and the bed could be a 50,000 bed too, a mattress. Uh, on the other hand, a mobile could be say 10,000, maybe a mattress is also of 10,000. So the, the product, the size is different. Here we are talking about logistics, here we are talking about size. So when the size, it would depend upon the product as to whatever things are done around it. When you're selling a mobile, what are the things around it? Whether you say transportation, whether you do marketing, so product, price, place, promotion. So everything falls within that particular arena. So definitely the logistics would be different. It could be, you know, uh, a different category for different products altogether. Now when we're saying mobile, mobile is something which will be there everywhere, whether it is a metro, whether it's a non-metro, it is a must these days. Without mobiles, mobiles were not there earlier at all. But now, you can, I cannot find a person who hasn't got a mobile. My maid has a mobile. My driver has a mobile. The office staff has a mobile. The plumber who comes and who goes back to village, the question which I ask him that, you know, uh, you get sick so often. So he says, in our village, the water supply is not very good. So maybe he doesn't have a good drinking water, but definitely he would have a mobile in his hand. So, you know, it has reached to that destination that when marketers go out, the reach is immense. You know, uh, Mr. Do uh, Mr. Manarend Modi keeps on saying Sava Karur Ki Janta. So now that so much of population, India is a big country for mobile. So mobile companies are rushing, coming to India, selling their product to each category. A phone could cost anywhere from 500 bucks to a lakh and, a mo and more, you know. You can, uh, more ka definition, you can just not think about it. It's, it could be anything. But as less as 500, a person can go and buy it. This is on a first hand. If you go for a second hand phone, it will cost even lesser. 
So, there are websites again to you know uh, go and purchase second hand. So, this is about two categories which we discussed. This is a product category. So, out of the product price place promotion, we are talking about the product. Now, uh, if we say price, now if I say uh, what could be the price of this bottle, it is a water bottle. Um, I am talking, so I need in between I need water, so I keep it right here. What could be the price of this? Uh, any answer would come in, the price could be 10, 15, 20, 25, not more than that. So, price speaks in itself about the product. The laptop which is right in front of me, what would be the cost here? Now, you would not say 5, 10, 15 rupees, you would say 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 25. So, in your mindset, a marketer as well as a customer, there is a mindset for a price as to what should be the price of an item. The definition for the price itself as to what the price would be, one, the marketer should be profitable, should get profits out of selling it to you. So, for example, if the cost price of this bottle is 3 rupees or 5 rupees, now they will not sell it at 5 rupees. One, the cost of the bottle needs to be taken out first, that is the first thing. Second, the promotion and the marketing cost, maybe it is say 6 percent, so you add another little money onto it. The transportation cost, again, wherever the plant is, from the plant to the distributor, from the distributor to the retailer, from the retailer to the customer, it has traveled around a lot. So, all the cost needs to be added. Then, will the cost be of the bottle? No, it would not. There would be some advantage more because they are making money out of it. So, after doing all that costing, there should be a profit margin as well. So, you will put, okay, this is my profit. So, a cost of any product, whether it is a house, whether it is a bottle, whether it is a laptop, it has to be thought in such a way, uh, the price of it has to be put in such a way so that it is acceptable. Now, if supposing somebody says, oh, it is such a pure water, it is, it is having nutrients, can you pay a lakh for it? I will say no, you know, but if somebody says, uh, we have this house, it is beautiful, it is next, um, you know, to a, a golf course and the price is 1 crore or the price is 50 lakhs or it is more depending. So, I will say, yeah, I will pay you that much for it. Why? Because price itself speaks, whatever the price is put for a product, that price itself speaks. If we say the property, the property price at one location would be something, at the other location would be something. So, if you say I got a house for 50 lakhs, now you would have a mindset. If somebody says I got a property for 3 crores, now you will have a difference. So, where it is, what is there in it that it is costing so much. So, price itself speaks a lot. So, this is an example which I gave you so that you can understand about the price, how marketers put the price together out of the product price place promotion. We just discussed product, now we discussed price. So, what is the next one? Let us take another example before we go into another one. All the students who are watching this program or you know everybody who is seeing the program, people who are sitting right here, they might be having a pen in hand. Now, the pen could be as you know cheap as uh, more economical could be 5 rupees, you know a very known brand versus a pen which is a luxury segment. Uh, it is available only at the airport or maybe it is available only at a 5 star place, a 5 star hotel and it is something which people carry to show off that ok, that is the kind of pen which I use, you know not the 5 rupee one. Although the work is same, a 5 rupee pen and a 50,000 rupee pen would do the same work, they would write. It is just the flow could be different, uh, maybe the flow could be same. Maybe only there is a brand attached to it, the brand which is created, the brand value which is created. So, brand itself to reach that particular brand it takes time, but once you are there you can sell the same product for a lot more. So, you can see the difference between a 5 rupee, a 5 bucks versus 15,000. So, this is price, you know, how do you place the price? Uh, you know, a car could cost say 2 lakhs, a car could cost say uh, a crore and above. You know, I am not naming any brands here, but it is for you to see and judge and find out uh, what is it which is making the difference. Of course, features definitely. 
but the added advantage is the brand, the brand value. So this we spoke about the price. So we spoke out of the product, price, place, promotion. We have spoken about the product and the price. Let's go to the next angle, which is place. Place, it is a very important, although I'll take a coffee example, but before that I had got a good thought, so I would take that example as well. Maybe a house. When you're buying a house, the place is the most important thing because once you buy a house and you start staying, you want a comfortable around, you know, around you want everything to be comfortable. It should be something because you're staying there every day. You go there back and forth, back and forth. So it should be something which you can afford, easy, safe. So a lot of things come into place. So when you say place, the first thing is where do you stay? The place where you stay, uh, the property which you're buying and you're staying there. So that is one. The second is maybe coffee place. There's a brand which is available in India throughout. Every nook and corner you will find, um, you know, hundreds and thousands of shops of it. Now, I had entered to in one such place. I was having a meeting. I had not gone there for coffee as such, uh, but we had a meeting location. We said, okay, let's meet at this particular coffee juncture and we will have the meeting and decide what to go about, how to do the marketing strategies. So we met at that particular place and we saw again the tent card example. I said, oh, wow. Now, I was looking for this particular device and it is right here. So there was a number attached to it. So the tent card had an email ID, it had phone, the product was there, right there available. Uh, you know, a person could say just talk to the manager, store manager and the product would be shown to you. You cannot purchase it, but you can see the product and these are the places where you can purchase it. So it is used as a place for promoting stuff, you know. So now I said, is this particular tent card available in, you know, put in all the places? They said, yes, our stores are there at 1000 plus locations. And this particular advertising is done at our store and at all the 1000 locations. So the place makes a lot of difference. So if you want to bombard your uh, advertising for a particular product or service, put it at the location where you're getting your tar target audience. Where is your target audience? What is the place you would market at? So you want those people who are having that sip of coffee and paying 100, 200 bucks, or they have come for a meeting to see that product, which is expensive, but a good item for them to use. So this is a way the place chosen as to how would you place it? How, which place the product would be available for purchase? One, we had discussed the online route. One, you have to give the information out. So first is the awareness about the product and then is the purchase. Who is the influencer? There's a lot of things which goes into marketing. We are starting with a very simple base of product, price, place, promotion, and then we will go details uh, into details about each category. So this is about the place. Now, uh, the same location, the same coffee place which I'm talking about, when I had gone to Delhi, there was a little different marketing which was done. And when I had gone to South, Pongal was celebrated there. So since India is a country which has different festivals, different vendors, so everything becomes different in that particular respect. So place itself makes a lot of difference. The way it is positioned and the marketing is done. Earlier, uh, what used to be done was a product was pushed towards the customer that, okay, everything is done to, towards the customer knowing about the product and it was taken for granted that the customer knows nothing about it. These days, the customer is intelligent. They have already done their competitive analysis kind of a stuff. They have already gone into markets. They have seen which place it would be cheaper. So now it is surrounded with all different, the customer is right in the center, not in the side where all the marketing is done towards the customer and then the product is bought. Now the customer is right in center and there are different kind of marketings which go around, digital marketing. If a person is more on Facebook, catch him on Facebook. If the customer is more on Twitter, catch him there. So that is the place digital. If a customer is not using any of those, maybe the customer is old, does not use about the technology, then how to reach out to them? Maybe go directly to their home or maybe at the market, catch hold of them. Mall, they're coming to the mall, catch them there. So it is marketers would have to think in, in a 360 degrees. With every category, you have to be different. So these days, product, price, place, promotion, but everything has to be done in a very thoughtful process. A leaflet itself, for example, uh, a material which is used for promotion. 
Now, if I see a material which is a nice thick material, classy, glossy finish, and it is nice to look at, maybe a car brand is on it, you will say, ah, yeah, they can spend that particular, that's an expensive car and they can spend that material. On the other hand, if you see a leaflet which is very thin, about to tear, dirty looking, now the leaflet itself is talking about the product. It's a sari ad, the sari is worth 100 rupees, 100 rupees sari. Oh. So two leaflets itself, when you just see the collateral, marketing collateral, you come to know about the product. You have a feel, the way it is promoted talks about the product itself. So this is just an example which I'm giving you. There could be more as well. Now, uh, talking, we have spoken about the product price, place, promotion. Now, I have sp has recently spoken to a rich man. He said, Pallavi, yeah, I have seen you doing lectures at a lot of places, institutes where you know you talk about this as a basis. But for me, the four P's are pen, paper, phone and presence of mind. This is my four P's, although this is not there in the books. But this is what everybody these days should have. If I have to take a call, immediately I have something to write. My phone should be there. There should be a paper where I'll be scribbling it and presence of mind. Now I said, okay, the other three I understand. What about the presence of mind? He said, well, demonetization has happened. Now, suddenly, what kind of marketing would you do? If you have presence of mind, you would think as to what could be done. The tactics would change. The marketing would no longer be same. It has to change if you have to reach out to the customer in a way that now that he has not left with too much of cash to you know uh, do the transaction, it has to be more on an online platform. So people are changing. Presence of mind. Uh, you just took the example of a vendor who has Paytm. Now, did, did he had Paytm earlier before demonetization? I said, uh, no. He said, now he has it. So, pen, paper, phone, keep it aside. The presence of mind is what is doing the sale. So, your four Ps, keep them aside. Presence of mind is more crucial here. So, I said, yes, that's there. If he would have not had Paytm, how would I pay him? Because I have the old cash. I don't have the new cash so much. I do have it, but I want to save it for a sudden, you know, need or a requirement. Although I have credit cards, but I do really want some cash in my pocket. So, they said, yes. Now think about a plumber, plumber, uh, a person who paints, a painter. Now these guys are of a different category. Maybe they are of a different category. Uh, they are not very rich. Uh, they are not professional. We are talking about a difference between organized and unorganized sector. So I'm talking about the one which is unorganized. Now, how would they take the payment? Would they take the payment on credit card? No, they would not. So you now they have they what they are doing these days they are taking the old notes and they are putting them in the bank. But you have to have a thoughtful process. Whenever demonetization happens, they also had the thoughtful process. They said, no, 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 we will not take the money. But then they said, if we do not, do we have a credit card machine, swipe machine? No, we do not have that. So if we do not have that, what to do? Maybe I'll accept old cash till a particular level and deposit it. People were realizing it. Now, recent news I heard that you cannot uh, deposit more than 5,000, I, you know, uh, whether the news keeps on changing and stuff like that. But yes, this is a process. So presence of mind is crucial. Uh, and with, with demonetization, a marketing strategy of complete different scale has to be made. It will not be the same uh, at all. Now, when you do marketing, uh, it could fit into different categories altogether. It could be ATL. It could be BTL. Uh, it could be, you know, uh, TTL. So it is, uh, if you say, what are the full forms of it? ATL is above the line. Uh, BTL is below the line, uh, through the line. So there are various ways. When you talk about ATL, this is a form of marketing which we do. So it is radio, television, newspapers, magazines, outdoors, press. So this, is, this comes into an ATL category, above the line. This is a marketing tactic which we do. Another is banners, social media. You do events to you know people to know about the product. Uh, I remember when I worked with a very luxury segment of a bag, uh, they said, firstly, we need to introduce this uh, to the top-notch people. Why? Because a bag which is worth 50,000 rupees, who would buy that? So all these purchases which are done, 
uh, you know, people should first be aware about it. A lot of people know about it from, you know, they go to foreign countries, they go to other countries and figure out about the product and then they come back, but it's not available in India, so they go there and buy it. But when you're putting their, that back in India, so they said, we want an event to be organized, a luxury event in which you call the who's who's of the, you know, uh, place. We said, fine, we organized an event people came in. So it was a form of a marketing. Although it's an event, people come, um, you know, eat food, drink, uh, see about the product category. Maybe there are some girls which are walking. They are doing some catwalk and introducing a couple of channels, uh, you know, as to what different kind of bags are there. So events are also a category. It doesn't come, it is not too much suited for an ATL or a BTL, but it comes on the TTL segment. So it is an event. Social marketing, which I spoke about, the Facebook, the Twitter example, that people now reach out to that particular segment. You're always there on a Facebook, you know, a lot of people are there on Facebook. So how to reach out there? You will be seeing a lot of ads which are there on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Instagram and so forth. So this is another channel, which is a social media. The last one is BTL, which is below the line. So now that is vertical banners, email marketing. Uh, telemarketing, you pick up the phone, call, hello, I want to sell something. So it's basically maybe a loan, a lot of insurance guys call. But yes, they do call because a lot of purchases are done like that. So not even a single method is left when it comes to marketing. A customer is tabbed. I had showed you an example where the customer was at the corner, but now the marketing style is such the customer is right in the center with a lot of marketing which is going around it. So it could be different for different people. It could be, say, uh, for me, you, your friends, family, everybody has a different way so that the marketer could reach. So this is what I wanted to talk about. And uh, so students, this is, we have spoken about the marketing. We have spoken about the customer, what goes. I took some example case study so that you understand. Uh, definitely the book, book material and online material would be available on the channels, but this is a way so that it becomes easier and a thoughtful process because when you go and join markets and you join big jobs, what you need to have is a thoughtful process. All these examples need to be there back of your mind, which is very, very important. So that is all for today from my side. Uh, any questions uh, which are there? Uh, though we are short of time over here and definitely okay. we'll plan a session where we could uh, have a one-to-one -one discussion so that uh, students will feel that yes their question was uh, put up and uh, they might get the answers of the questions. So dear friends, uh, right now though we don't have a uh, time over here but yes you can post your questions at info.cc at the date and ic dot in. Uh, we definitely will try to solve your queries the next time when uh, Ms. Pallivi Mohan visits our studio. So keep watching us, keep writing us uh, and yes we would meet again soon till then take care goodbye thank you ma'am thank you so very much thank you so much for having me